जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्री मेरे जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू आवर पूर्वा आचार्य आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू आवर ट्वेल्व अल्बा आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू माय गुरु लक्ष्मी and i pay my obeisances to lord shri manarayan i welcome all of you here physically at the shri narayan dham in durban south africa i welcome all those that are watching this discourse locally nationally and internationally and i welcome in advance those that are going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on youtube and the various groups from around the world subsequently i also welcome our lord Lord Shri Narayan, in his incarnation as Lord Ram, to the Shri Narayan Dham. This is just a formality for those of you that are from this ashram physically. You know the Lord lives here all the time, and you would have experienced the Lord all the time. But for the formality of Ram Nomi, I'm. Um, introducing and welcoming the lord in this incarnation so i've stated previously and i want to continue stating that the lord has not trusted any saint any sage any guru any spiritual master to deliver any knowledge on his behalf which is original which is original what original means knowledge that emanates from the supreme lord him so supreme lord did not go in somebody's dream he did not go on his to a saint in a mountain to humanity Supreme Lord does not trust anyone, and this is the reason why he incarnates timelessly. He is not seated there like a big boss in the sky somewhere, and he directs people what to do. Timelessly, he enters the material universe, and through his experience and he stay in the universe he lives the vedic injunctions he lives the vedic injunctions that he has promulgated for material life eternally so the same vedas repeats itself over every cycle in every cycle there is satyug and there is incarnations there is treta yug and there is incarnations there is dwapara yug there is incarnation and there is kal yug there is incarnation the incarnation is the same with the same knowledge the same lord and the same saints that initially elicited this knowledge will elicit exactly the same knowledge without moving a comma or a full stop without moving a comma or a full stop the knowledge is exactly the same in each and every cycle so don't think because you are now this guru then this knowledge just appeared from somewhere and the guru is dishing out this knowledge to you this knowledge is the knowledge the very essence of the supreme lords from creation and the shri sampradaya at the moment in the world is the only system that is giving you the knowledge as handed out by the supreme lord himself There are four other sampradayas, or three other sampradayas, of which 
this Sri Sampradaya is the principal Sampradaya. These other Sampradaya have concocted, have concocted and made their own. They fiddled. They fiddled with the original and they made systems to appease mankind. They made systems to appease mankind. I'll give you an example. If at every, throughout this Ram Nomi, if I make a big Havan Kund here with an extractor, how many people would you think would attend this satsang? Because I saw my former devotees just now I was, I was browsing, you say browsing? Mm. I was browsing through social media and I saw five of devotees that were from this ashram in another satsang somewhere and those five are the only five and they're busy doing Havan. For Ram Nomi, they're busy doing <coughs> Havan. You understand? So, these gurus, when they notice that they cannot attract devotees, then they go into Havan and Havan Samadhi. Now, instead of appeasing God, they start appeasing their devotees so that they can get a following. So, it is very clear in the Bhagavad Gita, very, very clear. And, th and this is said by the Lord. This is said by the Lord Himself and not the Guru. But limited uh, chapter 7, verse 23. But limited is the fruit gained by these men of small understanding. What understanding? So if you leave my satsang and you go to a haven and you throw some samagri inside, you're a man of how big understanding? How small understanding? <laughs> the worship of the gods will go to the gods, but my devotees will come to me. So as soon as you get involved, in Havan Samagri as a main focus, as the main focus of a satsang and people attend satsang just because of throwing some Havan Samagri inside. That's Hinduism. Fake Hinduism. That is fake Hinduism performing fake rituals. You understand? So if you had a car, well, there is a time you can do that. There is a time you can do that. There's a season for rituals. There is a season for rituals. And that season for rituals is in Treta Yuga. It doesn't mean to say, if Lord Ram came in Treta Yuga, then you must do the rituals that were performed in two million years late. It's as if the first motor vehicle, Vasan, Dana, Pradasan's father, how should you start those vehicles? Well, Vasan, you all know you're a new model. <laughs> From where? From? From the front. All right. Today's motor vehicle, how you start? No, there's no key to <laughs> of motor vehicle is you put your thumbprint room. Put your thumb room and put it back, stops. Now these men of small understanding, they come here and I tell them this is Kalyug. In Kalyug you start the motor vehicle with your thumb. In Treta Yug you crank the vehicle. But these idiots, 
they are leaving the vehicle where it starts and move. These idiots are cranky. <laughs> So they go outside the vehicle where the start button is there already and they're busy cranking. Busy? Last night they were busy cranking. And tonight they'll be busy cranking. And up until the day they take the last breath, they'll be busy. And then they'll see, hey. Acharya Ji told me I just believe way to God. There's no other way to God other than Sankirtana Yajna. And what is Sankirtana Yajna? Finding a bona fide spiritual master and coming to Satsang and hearing the discourse. Your sacrifice in all these in all these four seasons you have to sacrifice. In Satyu, in Treta Yuga, because you got 10,000 years. In Dwapara Yuga, you do deity worship in the temple. Dwapara Yuga, you go to the temple and you do deity worship and you live for 1000 years. In Kali Yuga, you only live for 100 years and there's no time. We perform three havans where we all were there. They have to be performed in the correct frequency by an expert in Pancharatra Agama. By an expert in Pancharatra Agama and those howans take over four hours. These Hong Kong howans you see now what I'm talking about is one hour long. Nobody got Pancharatra Agama training to do the Thawan. So what will be the result of the Thawan? Waste of time. But how excited these people get when they go into a Thawan. How excited they get. Hmm? You understand? Just that Thawan attracts them. And the reason that Hawan attracts them is because in their previous life, the same Hawan attracted them. Millions of lives, the same Hawans attracted them. And they call themselves Hindus. After the Hawan, after the Hawan, back to meet drink and cigarettes. Hmm? Sometimes during the hour the mind is already gone. Hey, when this nine days of fasting will finish, I can hit my first shot. Hmm? But here the Guru will teach you the science behind the hour. There's a science behind the hour. You don't find God in Ram Nomi, if you go nine times, you're not going to find God in the Havan. You find God in knowledge. Where you find God? In knowledge. Someone who knows God. Someone who knows God, whom God has revealed himself, a God-realized personality, must tell you who God is. Because the rest of the day you look for God in the sky, no in the sky. God is right inside your soul. And the only way God can get activated in your soul is through a bona fide spiritual master. Yes? God is sleeping in your soul. Inside your soul he is there. Also take, take you away from that. Only the Supreme Lord can do that. Only the Supreme Lord can do that. You are the GPS of where you want to go. And the Supreme Lord is the driver. He drives you where 
you want to go. So Lord Ram comes down every Treta you to teach man how to behave. And he teaches man right at the outset he go and gets himself a good who, who knows the Bhagavad Gita, who knows the Ramayana, who knows the Upanishads, who knows the Brahma Sutras, in and out, back to front, up and down. The Guru must be soaked in the Vedas. His reason to incarnate is to teach you how to find it. Then you must also ask yourself, when God incarnated in all his incarnations, through which sampradaya did God, through which institution did God incarnate himself? From the first incarnation until the last incarnation will be in 427,000 years time. And Tibetan will still be here because he's a plotter and planner. Tibetan will be lucky to see Lord Kalpe or Kalpe. Right, Tibetan? Yeah, I used to go many years ago. So, in which Sampradaya and which dot God has been wearing from his first incarnation right up to Lord Krishna. These people in this con made their own. Lord Krishna came through the Sri Sampradaya. Lord Ram came through the Sri Sampradaya. All the incarnations, Narsimha Deva, what dot is wearing? The fish incarnation, the tortoise incarnation, the boar incarnation. What dot is God wearing? The Lord is wearing this tilak in all of his nine incarnations. What is God telling you? Why has God chosen only the Sri Sampradaya to incarnate? <coughs> because that's the only Sampradaya that is pure Sanatana. How dumb can you be not to understand that? You're looking for God. You're here because you want God. Yes, you want things, but you know only God can give you things. Because you try to get things, it never work out. All of you try to get things your way, it never work out. Then you heard there's a guru somewhere. Then you came here and you want God. And if God only appeared in Sanatan Dharma through the Sri Sampradaya, where, why you want to find God in a Hong Kong system? Any other system beside the Sri Sampradaya in Sanatan Dharma is a fabricated system. It's counterfeit. Counter? Yeah. Whatever, you'll get things there, but they won't be for real. Do you understand? There's nobody in the Sri Sampradaya who stuck around was not successful because this is God's Sampradaya. This is the highest you can achieve and be with God. That is why things happen here like this. And you all know I was giving lollipops uh, and I stopped giving lollipops because I realized that no matter how much lollipops I give you, you eat the lollipop, but you take that stick and come and poke me. You sharpen it like a razor in one end. After eating the lollipop Guru gave you, 
and you want to shoot me with that stick. <laughs> so Guru don't give any lollipops anymore. You must work for it. One lollipop at a time. When you finish that one lollipop, I see you arrive. Can I give you a another lollipop? If I give you the whole box of lollipops, I'll be dead. No Guru. Huh? You understand? So you have to work for your lollipop. But there's one lollipop you get at the end of your life that doesn't finish. It's called liberation. And that's where the Guru is heading. Guru not worried about your small stories here. All right, Ashmika? Boys gone, boys came back, which day he went, which day it came back, how you got up in the morning, and the first word you said was Avi. <laughs> Guru not interested in those stories. Guru is interested in sending you home. Guru is interested in sending you home. But to keep your interest in the system, Guru throws some things this way and that way. But it, in proportion to you, whatever you get is through your qualification. It's how much you have cleansed yourself. Your, loyal to, your loyal to, loyalty to me is one. Loyalty to the Guru is one, but and it goes together with your cleanliness. So if you're loyal to me 100%, and if you're a murderer on the other side, your loyalty will work, but your that crime that you're committing all the time will inhibit your prosperity. Does it make sense? So you have to be loyal. Number one, you have to be loyal, even if you're a murderer. Doesn't matter, you have to be loyal, but then you have to start cleaning your character. And the purer your character gets, the more prosperous you get. In all aspects, material, spiritual, uh, happiness, but you have to start cleaning the <coughs> inside. And the inside is infested with anger, hatred, jealousy, uh, backbiting, gossiping, all those things you have to clean up. You have to clean up because if you don't clean up, then God, although is inside you, there's not even a gap in between you and Lord Narayan. Do you know that? Jessica, you know that? There's not even a gap between you and Lord Narayan. But yet he is as far as the sky. He's as far as the sky is because of anger, hatred, jealousy, uh, pride, lust, Greed. These things are keeping God away from you. But God is stuck onto you like this. Do you understand? So these things, Lord Ram comes down and he acts the part of the divine and Ravna acts the part of the demonic to teach you. To teach you. And I want to take today one aspect in which a lady is involved. And in India, she is called the most evil lady of all times because the Ramayana is an everyday story in India. And her name is Man Tara. Man, yeah, Man Tara means Hunch, hunchback, the deformity, hunchback. So Lord Ram was going to be, and yes, for everyone asking how the Guru and one of his devotees called Jessica are involved in politics. Again, the very basis for the Ramayana is politics. 
very basis of Ramayana is politics. Politics is a substratum of the Ramayana. Politics is a substratum of the Bhagavad Gita. Politics is a substratum of the Mahabharata. And gurus are involved in all of these. Vasista Muni is a guru, he is involved in Lord Ram's politics. Sandipan Muni is Lord Krishna's guru, he is involved in the politics of Lord Krishna. And Acharya Sham Ramanuj is Lord Narayan's guru, and he is involved in the politics of South Africa. And I heard from my black devotees that I was on ETV last night singing the Om Namo Narayan <coughs> Mantra. And I sang that mantra to South Africa because I said I'm going to change the consciousness of the politics in South Africa. I said this about three, four years ago. And today I am physically doing it. The Sri Narayan Dham at the end of May 29th would have made a tangible difference in the politics of this country. Because I'm singing the Sri Narayan or the Om Namo Narayan Mantra, which is the Maha Mantra. There's no other Maha Mantra. That's a lie. The Maha Mantra is Om Namo Narayanaya. That is the Maha Mantra. And I sing Om Namo Narayana to the public. And Om Namo Narayanaya to those that have taken initiation. So I'm singing the right mantra at the right time right place. <coughs> in 2018, I was given an instruction by my superiors, which is my Guruji, to expose Lord Sriman Narayan to the world. And we had a 24-hour Om Namo Narayan Akhan Bhajan, where for the very first time, Lord Narayan got exposed to the entire world. Yes or no? When I went on Google, there was just an I and I said in a discourse then <coughs> that I am looking for Lord Narayan on Google. I only found one half page. Today go on Google. And that was activated by the Sri Narayan Dham in 2018. And now I, am, I started going on a public platform in South Africa and I'm dispersing the Om Namo Narayan Mantra across the country. And as Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uttering his mantra translates to him being present wherever the mantra is <coughs> uttered. And I saw on TikTok, this mantra is gone all over. It's gone viral. That prayer I did yesterday, and then they find in the other prayer I did at the other four events, and everything is falling into place because Sanatan Dharma is there to dictate the politics, not only of one country, but the politics of this entire planet Earth. That is Sanatan Dharma. And the custodian of this knowledge is who? The Guru. So if the Guru is the custodian of this knowledge, then who is going to permeate it into us? So how can the Guru not be involved? 
How can the guru not be involved in politics? Do you understand? So this mantara, she was the third wife of Lord Dasrat, Lord Ram's father. And mantara came with Keki from the father's side. She was the housemaid. And she came from the father's side. When she got married, she was with Keki from the father's side. And when Keki got married to Dasra, she came over. She was the third wife and her son was Bharat. So Lord Ram was the jewel of the eye of King Dasra. He was the eldest son of the king and by law, he was to take over the kingdom from the father. And a night before the coronation of Lord Ram as king, Mantara devised a plan because she believed that if Lord Ram became the king, then her queen, Keki, would become an ordinary servant. And if she became an ordinary servant in the royal household, what would be Mantara's position? The servant of a queen, what would be her position? So to preserve her position, she devised a plan and she told Keiki that she must not agree to Lord Ram being on the throne. She must put her son Bharat on the throne. And at first, Keiki shrugged it off, but Mantara <coughs> continued convincing her and giving her reasons why she should. And this is called false propaganda. You will hear of false propaganda. When it's first run, you don't believe it. But if they continue running it and running it and running it, it becomes the Truth. That is why I chose, because we in the world of social media, that if there's any false propaganda against me or the ashram, many people say, Guru, leave it alone. I don't fight them because false propaganda, see what Mantara did. She changed the politics of Ayodhya. One woman changed the politics of Ayodhya where God is supposed to rule. Who is supposed to rule? Lord Ram is supposed to rule. So what happened is that she continued until KK submitted. And many years ago, I don't want to go into details, we got this entire week. But many years ago, KK owed the king two boons. King gave her two boons. And Mantara was so intelligent that she made KK make the king cash in these two boons. And when he did that, Bharat was to take the throne and Lord Ram had to be banished for 14 years. Why? Why 14 years? 14 years in, in uh, Valmiki Ramayan, 14 years in Mahabharat. Why 14 years? 
Because the verdict law is that if you are king for 14 years in succession, then you can become a lifelong king. So the idea was to banish Lord Ram for 14 years to the forest, and when he came back, Bharat would continue being king. And Mantara would be still the queen's maid servant, and she would be secured in her whatever she was enjoying in that time. Is this not political? Was one head not deposed for another head? Was not, does not this affect our lifetime today with the Guru himself? Was Jacob Zuma deposed as the president? Did it happen in the ANC family? Same family? removed one president and inserted a, another president, same family, ANC family, because this, family, this president was on the righteous path of bringing the country to the people. And the wife of Zuma is a corrupt president. Did they do that? Is it in our mind? Is it happening in South Africa? Who must the Guru back? Who must the Guru back? The Guru is going out publicly without fear, without any fear, because Lord Krishna's instructions are to the Guru, to Arjuna, be manly, go there and be Defend, <coughs> defend for righteousness, and they deal with the land there as well. This white monopoly capital, they own about 70% of South Africa. Yet South Africa belongs to us. Yes? So when your land has been taken away, Arjuna was told to pick up your arrow and go. And the Guru has picked up his arrow. There's a few photographs. I found some Zulu arrows, spears, and I took them yesterday when I was being photographed. Uh, Jessica, I sent it to me, uh, Ashmita. Those arrows you see there is Arjuna's arrows that I took yesterday. There's a few. I took one from a lady and one from a man. I didn't hold it like this. I positioned it like this. <laughs> I positioned it like this, okay? So, Guru is doing his work and Guru is within the scriptures. Within the scriptures. So, that is why I, you know, so I didn't want Mantara to get me banished for 14 years. You understand? I didn't want to get banished for 14 years, so I banged that story back into its perspective. Alright, so all of you understand? Do you like this type of understanding of Lord Ram with your current situation, or do you like the story form of Lord Ram? Lord Ram didn't come to be a historical figure. Lord Ram came so that every day his actions must relate to you on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Because many Hindus are looking at me with my tilak. I'm moving. I'm saying, Viva! Huh? I'm thinking this Guru is trend setting. And you will see just now other gurus. There's two gurus. The first guru is Yogi Adityanath. He's the CM of Uttar Pradesh. And I'm the second guru fearlessly entering the political arena. Well, in India, I don't have to go and enter politics there. I'm here. I'm, I've joined the MK party. And I will continue until sorted out. <laughs>
So no, there is nothing wrong with this. The Guru is within the parameters of the Vedas. Alright? Politics is part of your daily life. And the Guru is part of your daily life. And if your Guru is not infused in politics, how can it be of benefit to you? You understand? Because when you want to put petrol, it's politics. You come to Guru, Guru touch your head, you get one small increase, but your money is still going in petrol. Then you come to Guru, Guru, Guru got common sense. If the car needs your fingerprint to start, this Guru won't look under the book. Bumper for a crank. Because this Guru got common, open up Kali Yuga. In Kali Yuga, the only thing you need to do is just go to a satsang like this. How hard can it be? Go to a satsang, listen to what the Guru is saying, and go out and practice it. How hard can it be? Hmm? 